clap your hands for Mario Murillo. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's all. Remain on your feet a moment here. What a man of God, right? Yeah. Clap for the pastor. Really loud. Glory to God. Lord, I ask that mighty miracles will break out in this room. That no one will leave the same. That absolute power and anointing will flow in every moment of this time together this morning. Help me, Lord, to do your will and to make it so clear to the audience that you are in this room. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give Jesus the praise louder than for any. I want you to be seated. I want to talk to you from my heart. There is no greater endorsement than a man of God can give than to surrender his pulpit to a guest speaker. I am stunned by the quality of this church. Normally, you know, you think, well, why would you go to a church that already has everything? And you do. But I'm going to tell you something right now. God has chosen this place to bring revival to the East Coast. Come on, somebody. Say amen. Yes. And I believe it's important that I start out right. So what I'm going to tell you is that we're bringing our tent October the 22nd through the 25th, as Pastor said. We're bringing our tent to the fairgrounds in Winston-Salem. And I want to show you a short video. And I'm going to put a little pressure on you. The first service got very excited at the end of this video. And even if you fake it, I think for the sake of saving face, you'd be wise to enjoy it. It's a very simple video. And I want you to let it build your faith for what's coming to your city. I wonder if we could play that now, maybe dim the lights. They did an excellent job in the first excited about that are you 
Well, when the tent went up in Colorado Springs, which is where you saw that tent, a young lady by the name of Bree was down to 90 pounds and she was five foot 10. Because a complication with medication that was to deal with a parasite in her body, the combination of the sickness and this medicine nearly killed her. Her body declared war on itself. She literally began to cannibalize herself. And in the service, with what I believe were maybe days left to live, they brought her to the front, underneath the tower of speakers on my left-hand side. And Bree began to wail the most pitiful, plaintive, and it, it went right through you as she was crying out for God to heal her body. And the Lord said, if you'll stop preaching and go over there, I will be glorified. I'm going to say it again. I will be glorified. When the Lord healed her body in that moment, the power that everyone felt, not only on her, but all around her, was indescribable. And what was interesting is when she left, because she had no connection whatsoever to anyone in that tent, she had come on her own, somehow got there. Um, they lost track of her. And one day, uh, Kelly Hudnall, who's pastor, she, Kelly and Todd, the couple that run Radiant Church in Colorado Springs, she's driving down the freeway. And the Holy Spirit says, get off here. Take this exit. Go to this natural grocers. She said, I don't need anything from there. She, he said, go there now. She walked in and there was Bree, had already gained 10 pounds. <laughs> All the symptoms left her body. And we got a video of her. Now she's gained 30 pounds. And you know, it's a miracle when a lady says, I've gained 30 pounds and I want to thank God. <laughs> then another miracle was a gentleman who lived in the shadows. For several years, he wouldn't leave his house because he had five ruptured discs in his spine. And Bree was not a Christian, by the way, when she was healed. She was healed and then born again. Somebody give God the glory. I mean, I mean so here we are watching this trend toward unsaved people being healed. This gentleman has uh, got five vertebrae that are ruptured, indescribable pain. He showed us the capsules that he took every day, 15 separate pills, different medication, none of it touched his pain. Became agoraphobic, he wouldn't leave. His friends worked on him and said, come to this event. He thought it was a concert. So he sat in the back shifting around in his seat, trying to survive the pain. And he said, this is a Christian meeting and he wanted to leave. And what I tell you now, because some of you don't know me, you're finding out about me for the first time, is I give God all the glory for everything. I don't take any of the credit. I repeatedly make that clear to our audiences. As he is deciding to leave, I point to where he's seated all the way in the back. Remember, there are 4,000 people there. I point to where he's sitting and I said, there's a man right back here whose spine is being healed. And he said it felt like the vertebrae just snapped back into place. 
And for the first time, oh, we need to shout. We need to shout. For the first time, he, he had no pain in his spine whatsoever. He is the first one at church every Sunday and the last one to leave. He was not a Christian and he got saved. Third testimony happened only a few weeks ago. His name was Elijah, and Elijah was running from the gangs in Colorado Springs. And he ducked into the church meeting. We were doing a miracle service to hide. So that night, we had 750 seats in the church. 1,500 people showed up. So he's there, and uh, I point him out. I said, young man, stand up. Your left knee is being healed. He stared at me the way a raccoon stares at truck headlights. <laughs> he's dealing with a lot of drama that I have no idea about this. So he had a sports injury in his left knee, but he wasn't a Christian, and he's got a hit out on him. And I said, come up here on the stage. Let's have all of America have a look at you right now. And because it was his left knee, he came up. What I didn't know, and I wish we had the video of this available. What I didn't know is he wasn't healed yet. So he walked up on that knee, stood next to me, and I said, how did it feel when God healed you? And all of a sudden, right then, he started to be healed. And his eyes are getting big. And the look, he looked at me, and he, he did this. And he's trying to figure out what all is going on. And so we prayed together, and he got saved. Woo! You know... I want all of you to know something. Today is not arranged by man. You know, give me a, a, a look from, from in the spirit, not in the flesh. Look at me in the spirit. You and I are in a room, but we are here in the divine will of God. Because God is going to pour out his spirit on this city. I'm going to try again. Some of the last people you would ever think are going to turn to God in your family within the next several months are going to be saved, baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm going to try it again. Marriages are going to be restored. People are going to turn to God. I'm telling you. Celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. I wonder if we could put a verse of scripture up on the screen and it's from 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and I believe it's verse 14 uh, 15 and 16. I may be off on that a little bit, but I want to take a moment and I, and I want to tell you why it's so important. It says, for we are not overextending ourselves as though our authority did not extend to you. For I was with, when I was with you, we came with the gospel of Christ, not boasting of things beyond measure, that is, in other men's labors. But having hope that as your faith is increased, I'm going to have everybody repeat that phrase. Having hope as your faith 
is in key. We shall be greatly enlarged by you in our sphere to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast in other men's accomplishments. The most important thing I've said in my life, I've been saying in Word of Faith churches. Kenneth Copeland saw what God was doing through us. And he became a friend. Two years ago, we bought a thousand square foot tent. Excuse me, eight thousand square foot tent. It could seat about a thousand people. We outgrew it. We had to buy one twice that size. So we bought a 20,000 square foot tent, more than double the size. And quickly, as you saw in the picture, that tent is now too small. So we contracted to build a 40,000 square foot tent that will seat 5,211 people. In the time of woke, in the time of perversion, in a time when everyone says that the day of the mass crusade in America is over. We bought it. Brother Copeland called me. And you want to know when you're shaking is when your phone rings and you answer it and you hear, Mario, it's Kenneth. Anybody here? I said, yes, sir. He said, I understand that you're going to buy a new tent. And I, he said, how much is it going to cost? I said, well, it's going to cost $86,000 because I had my thumb on the paper. <laughs> he said, well, I'm going to give you $100,000 for your tent. Somebody clap, give God the glory. There it was. The second time he called, he said, Mario, it's Kenneth. And for some reason, it was just as jarring. He said, I know you're doing a rally at the Baby Center at Oral Roberts University. I wonder if you would mind if I came to the meeting. So I said, I said, brother, we'd be honored. We'd be honored. So he came. Before the meeting, he met me uh, in a dressing room backstage. And he said, I found out something. He said, you were wrong about the price of your tent. I said, yeah, I had my thumb on the paper. It's $186,000. He said, what it looks like, I need to give you another $100,000. Somebody clap and give God the glory. Well, he said, you're going to need more chairs, aren't you? I said, yes, sir. So he said, that's what the extra. He said, you need 186. I've given you 200,000. Buy some chairs. When we now own thousands of chairs and they're going to be set up for the first time. We asked Miami Tent, who built the tents for the major evangelists, when was the last time that you built a tent this large? He said, this tent is the same size as Brother Shambach's tent. <laughs> and you know what? I think we better start praising God and giving God the glory. And for all the young people that your neighbor shouted real loud when they heard the name Shambog, just ask him who he was. It's a massive man of God. Well, I'm in some very scary company. I want to read a verse to you. I want all of you to look me right in the eye. But first, put your hand over your heart. Say, Jesus, Jesus. Speak, to me. speak to me. Your word, Your word 
is my life. Give us this day our daily bread. Amen. How many of you, if God speaks to you, you will obey him? How many of you believe that your problems are solved by obeying God? I have been in the faith churches preaching a very special message. I can't get to all of it, just a portion. But I think you need to listen to this. We live in an extremely dangerous time. The Bible tells us that it says that there is something horrible that was happening. It said the prophets prophesy falsely. That's what I call stage one apostasy. And it says, it says a horrible and terrible thing has happened in the land. Stage one, it said the prophets prophesy falsely. Stage two, and the priests rule by their own authority in cahoots with the false prophets. And third, and my people love it this way. That is a stage three apostasy. When the prophets are false and the ministers in the pulpit agree with them and build churches not by the power of God, but by their own empires. And third, when the audience is like it. And I want to know what kind of audience I've got today. I want to know that you are not one of those compromised Christians that's got to be entertained and babysat, but you're on fire for God. Help me somebody. I may be on fire for God. The verse of scripture that I want to read is found in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 30. Um, and 31. Jeremiah 5, 30 and 31. It says an astonishing and horrible thing has been committed in the land. I'm going to stop and I need a loud amen, but I want to make the point and then you give me an amen. Here it comes. When the world, when the church looks at the world, we think the problem is the Democrats, the drugs, the gangs, the perversion, the drag queens, and the loss of our rights. None of that would have happened if the church were not asleep. Am I right? None of that. But I'm going to tell you who the real villain is because I, I'm going to get to something I think is important. I want to bring my tent to Winston-Salem. But listen, Winston-Salem needs another powerless Christian event the way a submarine needs a screen door. What we need is fire. What we need is the anointing. What we need is the power to get somebody off of alcohol in one step instead of 12. We need to empty wheelchairs, open the eyes of the blind. We need gangbangers to be born again. Somebody help me preach right now. What is wrong is very dangerous. Let me tell you that the, the jab was a problem. I don't want to get into any deep weeds politically but I want you to know that because we didn't have drug companies that cared more about money than the health of people. Now, we did have that. And it wiped out polio with minimum side effects. That was a jab we all wanted. When I was a kid, I wanted my polio shot. Nobody had to get on there and threaten me and say, I'll fire you if you don't get your polio shot or you're not a... You're not a decent person if you don't get it. Because they did it right. They were transparent with the American people. They didn't hide their data. But here's what I want you to understand. It's a sermon about counterfeit Christianity and how dangerous it was to America. How it got us in the mess we're in now. 
Finney said, if there's corruption in Washington, blame the pulpit. If the, if the media is wrong, newspapers are false, blame the pulpit. And so the moment arrived, and I want you to listen to this. The moment arrived when we got our shots and found out that the way it works, you see, is it fools the body. The body reacted to it as if it were polio and attacked it. So if polio ever showed up, you were immune. Now, that's a good thing. Now let's apply it spiritually where it becomes a very evil thing. If you inject to a generation a version of Christianity that fools the spirit, but it's dead, then if the real were ever to show up, you'd be immune to it. So you're actually safer on crack than you are in dead religion. I'm gonna say it again. Because at least on crack, you could get desperate. You might be safer as a prostitute than to live in a church that gives you a 12 minute sermon and hands you coffee as you walk in because they're afraid you're gonna go to sleep Somebody better help the man of God right here. They don't feel the Holy Spirit. One night I was terrified because the leader of the Black Panther Party was sitting on the front row. That didn't terrify me. He was sitting next to the pastor's daughter. And it wasn't his influence on her that terrified me. It was the other way around. Because when God started to move, that young man, a leader in the Black Panther Party, began to weep and break before the truth. He wanted God. And the message that was breaking him wasn't even phasing her. I know Christians that even boast and make fun of the moving of the Holy Spirit. They don't realize they wouldn't be capable of that unless they'd been injected, inoculated, and rendered immune by the power of the devil from the real deal. So here's what I want you to see. I want to read the verse. An appalling and horrible thing. Jeremiah didn't say that very often. And in the Amplified, which uh, uh, let's try the classic amplified version. I'm, I'm really uh, working the folks that run the Blessetron. It says, and I'll read it and we'll get it. It's no problem. The AMPC, an, ap an appalling and horrible thing, bringing desolation and destruction has come to pass in the land. Don't blame the Mexican cartels. Don't blame the godless politician. Blame the compromised preacher that has built an empire on his own power. Blame the online prophets who are distracting the church from repenting and knowing God and giving them out of Bible experiences. It got quiet all of a sudden on me. Somebody said amen. It's the truth. That's why you better thank God for this church because this man is not going to lie to you. This man is not going to flatter you. This man is going to preach the book as it is written under the anointing. Somebody better thank God. Truth hurts up front, but it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness. So here's what it says. An appalling and horrible thing bringing desolation and destruction has come to pass on the land. More than socialism, phony Christianity cursed America. The prophets prophesy falsely, not all of them, 
Not all of them. Thank God we've got prophets today. True men and women of God who hear from God. But then we've got others saying things like cows drive tractors in heaven. And Christopher Reeves is giving people flying lessons. And there are mountains of jello. And people are listening to this woman. But you see what that does? The people that believe it are just as much at fault as she is. Because they're out of commission. She even said that I saw your son who died on drugs and I feel like Jesus is going to pull him out of hell and give him a second chance. Thousands are following her. So we're not talking about something that happened in the Old Testament. This is happening right now. See, but my job is not to correct all these people. My job is not to do that. My job is to tell you this. Instead of that, what do you say we cast out devils, make the lame walk, the blind see, and the deaf hear, and have a supernatural move of God in America? It says the prophets prophesy falsely, stage one. The priests exercise and rule at their own hands and by means of the prophets. And my people love to have it so. I want to turn your attention to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 4. And once again, this is going to be in the classic Amplified. I'm sorry I should have clarified that earlier. But I'll read it. It says, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead. Look me in the eye. This is big. Because he says, I'm telling you this in front of the Trinity. I'm telling you this. I'm instructing you as if we were standing in front of the throne of God. And I'm leaving and I'm giving you advice about your ministry. Herald and preach the word of God. Keep your sense of urgency. Stand by be at hand and ready whenever the opportunity seems to be favorable or unfavorable, whether it is convenient or inconvenient, whether it is welcome or unwelcome, you as preacher of the word are to show people in what way their lives are wrong and convince them, rebuking, correcting, warning, and urging and encouraging them. Now I'm going to stop and I need all of you to smile at me. He's about to explain why there needs to be a truth surge. He said, this is in essence what he's saying. I'm leaving, you're staying, so I want to tell you what to do now. Amplify the amount of Bible you preach. Deepen the amount of the word of God that you speak. Concentrate vast amounts of truth into people because something is coming. Do you know that in the year 2020, in December of 2019, excuse me, I wrote a blog that said the churches would be empty, and I didn't know why. Every other preacher in my circle and the prophets that were on TV, many of them, uh, this is just certain prophets that I have issues with, were saying, 2020, I'm going to tell you they're coming. 2020 will be a year of great increase. 2020 will be a time where the church will multiply. Money is coming. Blessing is coming. And how did they all miss it? And how would it have sounded in 2019, in December, if you would have said, thus saith the Lord, don't let the government lock down your church. They're going to tell you to lock it down because I'm going to give you special protection. Something is coming. It would have been rejected, but it would have been what we need to hear. I'm going to say it now. We have got to grow up, people of God. Let us, let, we got to say to our pastor and our priest, don't tickle my ears. Don't flatter me. Tell me what I need to know so that I'm ready. 
Now I'm going to add to it this. It is the will of God for you to prosper. It is the will of God, whether there's a drought, it is not going to affect you. If the government changes the money, it's not going to affect you. If you are anointed of God and you're standing for the truth. I mean, if you still love me now, do you? Okay, thank you. Now, I'm going to... And he said, I want you to have a truth surge. And I want you to do this warning and correcting and urging and encouragement being unflagging and inexhaustible in patience and in teaching. And then he explains why. For the time is coming. And we saw it. One extreme, we had false prophets. Other extreme, we had mega church pastors. Dr. David McKenna wrote a book called Fire in the Fireplace. And in that book, he mentioned this incredible truth about many of the mega churches that were coming years before it happened. He said they will exalt their pastor to superstar status if he agrees to keep the rightful demands of God off of their life. So instead of making them strong, instead of making their marriages work, he flattered them. And we've seen it. And we've heard them say the craziest things. We've heard Andy Stanley in, in Atlanta, Georgia, the great man of God's son, Charles Stanley, who just went to heaven. His son is talking about, well, maybe we need to rethink the LGBTQ thing and not look so hateful. Or maybe the Old Testament is invalid. How, how could you and I have imagined 10 years ago anybody saying that? And the scary part is not that they said it, but that it made their church grow. So the Bible is saying the time is coming when people will not endure sound doctrine, wholesome instruction, but having ears itching for something pleasing and gratifying, they will gather themselves one teacher after another to a considerable number chosen to satisfy their own liking and to foster the errors that they hold. When you go to a doctor, you don't tell the doctor how to treat you. But now in church, we tell the pastor how to treat us. And the parts of your Bible that I don't like if you don't give them to me, I'm going to go to the other church that will tell me what I want to hear. That's why this church is becoming more valuable. Because that kind of church that I just described is going to be replaced. Something is happening in America. The power of God is starting to flow. I call it the Bud Light effect. How many of you know people are saying, I'm sick of dead church. I'm sick of woke corporations telling me what to believe. I'm ready for the word. Clap real loud right now in Jesus' name. What do we need? What do we need? Truth and signs and wonders. Loud amen. The greatest has been, whoever lived, the greatest comeback story in the history of the world was Moses. He was 80 years old. He had been a military leader. He had gone to the pinnacle of success and spent 40 years hiding. He left when he was the age of 40, his dream of being the deliverer of Israel. And now he's 80. He's belonging now to an organization that I think a lot of believers in America are in now. I call it the Christian Witness Protection Program. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and Moses was done. 
the devil had even called off his surveillance. And when even the devil isn't watching you anymore, you know you're a has-been. He could only get a job with his father-in-law. That was all he could find. Sad. Now, we find him, and one day, he sees a bush, and the whole world changed. The whole world. I'm going to leave the bush over here for a second, and then I'm going to go over here to Los Angeles. We're a young man, about that tall, no hair, a little bit chunky. He's selling vacuum cleaners because he saw an infomercial about how to sell. He said, you know what? I'm so good, I could sell hearing aids over the phone. <laughs> and so he's knocking on one door after another. And he's got this vacuum cleaner that he believes in. So he knocks on the door and the door is open and there's the man from the television infomercial. The one that got him into sales. And he looks down at him with pity and he said, young man, you know who I am, don't you? He said, yes, sir, I do. He said, I want to know if you'd like to buy a vacuum cleaner. And he said, well, son, let me tell you something. If ever anybody had no hope of selling something to another person, it's you selling to me. And you know how I, in the infomercial, I always gave reasons. Reason number one, I'm in a hurry. I'm about to make $150,000 to give a 30-minute lecture to these CEOs. And you're in my way, and you're costing me money. Second, already know more about sales than you ever will. And everything you know you got from me, but you don't have everything I know. So please step aside. And finally, before I leave, I already own five of the best vacuum cleaners in the world. That man with all his bows was a full 45 minutes late to his lecture. And with a red face, he stood up and he said, I'm sorry I'm late but I was buying a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and he said, you know, I thought I knew everything there was about sales until this young man looked at me and he said, sir, I know I'm costing you money. And I know you know more about everything than I do. And I know you already own five of the best vacuum cleaners, but I'm gonna ask you one question. Can any of your vacuum cleaners suck a bowling ball out of a closet from 19 feet away? <laughs> he said, I looked at that machine. I looked at him. I told my pilot, hang on. This I have got to see. <laughs> now I'm going to give you a modern translation. The whole world changed when Moses turned and looked at a bush. And America began to change when a football player in the NFL had a heart attack on January the 3rd. Suddenly prayer was legal in the NFL. Four weeks later, a revival breaks out at a college in Kentucky. Six weeks later, the Jesus Revolution movie comes out. Then the beer thing happened. Then Disney. Then Target. Then Elon Musk with Twitter. The whole landscape, the earthquake has started. Woke regime is starting to crumble at the seams. And millions of Americans are suddenly saying, I need something real. I don't want you to corrupt my kids. I want to keep my American freedom. I want you to listen to me. The outrage is setting the stage for the outreach. Why are thousands running into my tent? All in up and down the Central Valley of California, the Christians have never since the Jesus movement seen a tent moving from one city to another and people coming and we have to start an hour early 
because the gangsters are there, the addicts are there, and the businessman and the businesswoman are there. Something's going on, and I'm gonna explain it to you. Hallelujah. And it's this. Exodus 3.3. 3. Moses saw the third law of thermodynamics being violated about mass and energy. A desert bush has no right to burn more than a few seconds. It's gone. It's consumed. It might as well have been made out of paper. But it didn't. And the flame didn't touch the wood. And it didn't consume it. And it was a very violation of science and natural law. So the man standing there staring at the vacuum cleaner and he says, this I have got to see. Now I want you to look at that verse behind me. I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned. I'm going to read it again. I will turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned. In other words, this I have got to see. Don't look at me like that. That the prostitute is not ready to get saved. That the corrupt politician is not ready to get saved. If we quit playing church and we pay the price and then the lame walk and the blind see and the deaf hear and medically confirmed miracles break out, all of this community is going to beat a path to the church saying this I have got to see. Somebody said hallelujah right there. You know, I'm not here to beat a dead horse. Not here to get on. I don't care about the astonishment and the falseness and all that. What I care about is we have an opportunity to do it right. We have an opportunity to see it happen. How many of you want to see it happen? Clap your hands right now. Clap your hands right now. Tonight at six o'clock, I want you to bring the sick. I checked the TV guide. Everything on tonight is stupid. I just wanted to give you the facts. And I want you to understand I'm not here to bash the other churches or to bash. That's not what I want. I think we all understand what's happened. But let's focus on what we can do now. Amen. And let's not buy into the idea that we can't because we can. The greatest miracle that I've seen is souls being saved in record numbers. People will come into our tent. They're absolutely undone by the presence of God. And they want Jesus. I adamantly am going to say, let's not wait till the tent gets here to see that. Let's see it tonight. Let's see it tonight. How many of you are ready for tonight? The only time I'm gonna make a commercial at all is right now. I have three books here. This is the one I wanna showcase. It's our turn now. This book is a life changer and it'll be available $15 when you leave. We also have Do Not Leave Quietly and Vessels of Fire and Glory. I can't tell you how these books have done. They've been amazing, but The only way I can prove to you that thousands in this city are ready to be saved right now, ready to turn to God, is by demonstrating it. It's the only way I know. I'd like you to bow your head and close your eyes. Modern life has accomplished one thing. 
It has taken hope, despair, anxiety. It's wiped off the hope, added the anxiety and the fear. So that people are living in a chemically induced nightmare where they don't know about tomorrow and they don't think anything decent, innocent, or beautiful is left. This condition is not limited to the inner city. It's in the wealthiest halls of Wall Street as well as the homeless camps. It runs the spectrum. For many years, we've heard sermons where God seems to lightly touch certain areas of our life. But Americans are crying out for truth and reality. So what I'm going to tell you, what I'm going to say, is you're sitting in that seat right there. You have the opportunity to change the feelings that dominate your life. The mindset that is crippling you. The habits that are enslaving you. You can have what the audiences had when Jesus taught by the Sea of Galilee and on the Mount of Olives. You can have the feeling they got. Why is it that this man's words have so much authority? Why do they have such an overwhelming ability to make the Romans not feel like a threat or life cruel and irresistible? Suddenly I feel free. I feel right. I feel good. And I feel that God has allowed me to live a life that pleases Him. In the New Living Translation, in Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, it says, It is God who is at work in you to give you both the desire and the power to become someone that pleases Him. What an enormous statement that is. Drug rehab might give you the motivation, but it hasn't had the power to reduce the urge. Christianity says, I'll change your desire and I'll give you the power to stick to the new life. I'll give you the power and the desire. I want you where you're seated to let me pray for you. We're gonna exercise the greatest power in the universe. It is simply this. If any two of you shall agree is touching anything on earth, it will be done. For wherever two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Wherever you are in this room right now, I want you and I to exercise that power. Mario, I need a new life. I need to know Jesus not as a distant concept, but as a dynamic friend who is intimately the result of all my blessings and my power. I need to surrender to him. Let him remove the old and make me new. I need to let him do that. But let me tell you, the Bible says, if any two of you shall agree on it, anything on earth, it will be done. Let you and I agree in prayer. Mario, pray with me that I will be forgiven of my sin and I will know Jesus today in power. If that's what you want and you'll let me, please raise your hand right now. You see, and you're not alone. You're not the only one raising your hand. But I want all of you that have your hands raised, stand to your feet right now. Don't be ashamed. Get up on your feet. This is your moment. This is your moment. Now, without any hesitation, get to the nearest aisle 
walk up here in the front and I'm gonna ask pastor to join me on the stage I want you to look and see the miracles that are happening right in your church. This is where the church needs to clap the loudest right now. Come. Come. Look at the way the power of God is working in your midst. I want you to say these words with me. I promise to pray with you. I want the church to join in because you love these people and you want them to have the miracle you got. Say, Lord Jesus, it's my time to experience the love and power of being a new creation of leaving the old starting the new with all my sins forgiven I know that you died on the cross for me I know that you rose again for me and now I'm yours with all your power 